Coca-Cola Bite, ideas for DSPs to chew on. We're going to do something a little bit different today. But just as a reminder, my name is Chanel Salonia. I'm the Associate Director, Clinical and Educational Services at Vita Community Living. And Dave Kingsberger, who you'll hear speak shortly, is the Director of Clinical and Educational Services at Vita Community Living. First, we want to acknowledge the direct support professionals working the front line, delivering services during this very difficult time. The purpose of this vlog today is a bit different. Um, we do want to provide information, education, but most importantly, support. We're not providing medical advice, but we really do want to say thank you to all of you who continue to pro provide service, to provide support to such a vulnerable population. So we're going to talk a little bit about social distancing and isolation, and what that means for our physical and mental health. As the Prime Minister discussed earlier, social distancing will be crucial to help stop the spread of this virus. He described social distancing as keeping at least two meters apart from others, avoiding busy environments, locations where there are others. This is for the safety of ourselves and the safety of others as well. But I want to talk about the fact that there's evidence that the rate of mental illness in those with intellectual and developmental disabilities is greater than those with no intellectual or developmental disability. And isolation is one of the key factors involved in the worsening of mental illness symptoms. So the effects of social isolation and loneliness can have they can have profound effects on our physical and mental health. It's also important to know that this can affect those with existing anxiety disorders or depression, as well as those without pre-existing concerns too. So this is difficult for all of us to grapple with that uncertainty of what tomorrow brings. It's times like this that make it extra hard to remain hopeful, calm, motivated. I do want to share though that when feeling anxiety, it often feels like it's never going to end. But remember that anxiety is time limited. There is an end. It will pass. We also want to discuss a little bit about social isolation and loneliness, but the differences between us. There, are, there is a difference. So there are evidence-based things that we can do during social isolation to keep our heads up and to move forward and to refrain from feeling lonely. I wanna avoid jargon, but this is something called behavioral activation in the psychology field. For example, human beings, we thrive on structure, on having a daily routine with activities outlined, which can really help combat these feelings of, of loneliness and worry during times of isolation. Having a reason to wake up in the morning, uh, to get ready for the day, to somewhat know what to expect, it can really help lower feelings of anxiety and depression. Now for individuals with, for some individuals with IDD, having a visual schedule has been really helpful so developing this visual schedule in collaboration with the individual, of course, it can help in bringing some, adding some normalcy, some predictability within their day. Also setting some time to call loved ones, reaching out to peers through electronic means, of course. I've seen images floating around uh, social media over this past weekend of people socializing through Skype or Zoom meetings. I thought this was amazing. I would encourage you to set some time aside, schedule it in with others, for yourself and for those that you support as well. You know, heat up the kettle, grab a cup of tea, a coffee, settle in with this new form of electronic socializing. You do understand that we're all trying to juggle with our emotions, with, our, with this level of uncertainty, our own anxieties during this time at the same time, time trying to assist those that we support and also holding up our forts at home too. This isn't easy. I had, I had a professor once tell me, 
well, she would she described our family unit, our community as our tribe. And I loved this because it's so true. She always say, Chanel, how's your tribe doing? And I always take a step back and think, wow, what? That's such a powerful word, and why am I finding it so powerful? We're used to living in this independent society here. We go to work, we come home, we prepare for the next day, we wake up, we do it all over again, usually feeling alone, but not always realizing it. We have a tribe surrounding us. These are the times, as quirky as this sounds, these are the times that we need to call on our tribe for support. But on a complete side note, who better to do this social distancing than us here in Canada? We're often stuck indoors around five months because of our winter season. However, I get it, there's a difference. The difference now is that during our winter months, although we're inside, we're often engaged with others, we're gathered indoors with others, with family, friends, we're at coffee shops, restaurants, indoor playgrounds, and so forth. So no doubt, as social beings, this is extra difficult to do right now. So what else can we do to keep those we support and ourselves motivated, hopeful, and healthy during this time? I'm going to pass this on to Dave Hingsberger right now, who will discuss social distancing and what that means a little bit further. Yeah, we want to talk about social distancing and we want to talk about social needs because we're aware of people with disabilities and sometimes their, their lack of social contact. And that can happen typically, but now in the times of the pandemic, I think it gets a lot worse. So I, there are very simple solutions to the issues of isolation and loneliness for people with disabilities, and that is contact, simple human contact. Most of the contact that we have with people with disabilities is often very clinical or has some, some ultimate goal, I'm going to suggest that we need to look at a different kind of, of contact. A number of years ago, I did a study um, looking at the, for people who are in 24-7 uh, social, uh, social services systems, how many of the people they serve get 15 minutes of time, uninterrupted time, uh, a day, and how many of their clients did. And it was really disturbing to discover that the answer was none. They didn't get 15 minutes of time that was just directed for them and just for them to be able to express themselves. And this isn't necessarily about need or about about uh, problem behavior or any anything else, just simply talking. So I think we can look at uh, the power that our staff have in just creating a social bond uh, for a few minutes every day, just a few minutes every day for somebody to feel important, a few minutes every day for somebody to feel heard, a few minutes every day for somebody to talk about the things that they want to talk about and feel that they have been listened to. And I'm not talking about counseling and I'm not talking about therapy. I, I think that sometimes people with disabilities are over-therapized. I think what we really are looking at here is just time where they can simply talk about what it is uh, that they need. Uh, you're at home with them, they're at home because of the uh, epidemic and there's going to be all sorts of time. So maybe use that time to create that kind of social contact uh, with you. Uh, and if you can involve other people in that, uh, that, in that social time, I think that would be much, that would be helpful. So for example, if you have somebody with a disability who will talk to you uh, and there's another person with a disability that also will talk to you, maybe the three of you could talk together um, just to, so that they have this social experience. The, the next thing I think we can do is remember if they have social contacts that are external to the, to the home, 
that shouldn't ta stop. Uh, social isolation um, doesn't mean that we don't talk to each other anymore. So if we looked at bringing people together who normally would see each other over the course of a week in the, in, in the, the day program that they're in or in uh, other activities that they attend to, um, seeing if you can set up electronic visits where they can have a coffee hour together uh, and just have time uh, w within that relationship and maintaining that relationship. Remember, people with displays who have relationships have worked hard to build those relationships and it would be sad to see those crumble over the time uh, span uh, of this pandemic. We don't know how long it's going to be, uh, but it set up electronic visits. I was listening to the radio and I heard about this family that was going to be meeting for the first time, um, all of them together from around the world where their family had all traveled um, to have dinner together uh, over iPad and FaceTime. So they sat down for dinner. There was only one or two people per house um, that were uh, that were there for dinner, but they were they just I think there were 60 of them had had dinner together, and I think that that's a lovely idea. So if we if we have friends already in the community, let's make sure that they have the opportunity to to meet and to speak and to and to enjoy each other's company. One of the things I do hear a lot is. Um, but he doesn't talk. Um, but, and that sort of means I don't know how to communicate with him really, but uh, it doesn't matter whether or not somebody speaks uh, in order to have contact with them. If they don't speak, uh, look at the activities that they do during the day, the things that they really like to do, and simply sit down beside them and do it with them. Um, it is not a waste of time. Uh, it is a time to connect, a time to bond, a time to let the person know that they're simply not alone. Um, so again, using our social power as staff to uh, reinforce the fact that somebody is cared about and that somebody matters. So looking at doing some kind of activity with those individuals I think would be really really helpful um, and the last thing that I wanted to say is um, let's if you can bring people together uh, in in social games and there's all sorts of games that you can play that bring people together like take crocodile or or Uno, or um, or any of those kinds of parcheesi, any of those kind of activities where you're around um, a table together and you're and you're simply playing the game. Uh, again, it's it's not a waste of time, and you can use this as you play the game to increase somebody's sociability, um, help people speak to one another about the game that they've played. Um, I think that would really matter uh, for uh, people with disabilities. So the suggestions are simple and there's just a few. Is 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day spend uh, in talking with somebody about what it is they want to talk about. Create the opportunity for electronic visits with their friends. Um, if they don't speak, to side-by-side -side activities with them or work on some kind of communication system uh, and finally play some games. Uh, you have all your other tasks uh, that you're doing with the person with the disability if they're learning various skills in the home. Uh, you need to keep those up as well, um, but you need to remember that that's that's the part of the, your job that you think matters. 
uh, during this pandemic, uh, pandemic, I think that we're learning that what really matters is each other. And what really matters is the connections that we have and our need uh, to be seen uh, in our relationships with other people. So if you can do that, make sure that people feel seen in one of several ways. I, th I think you're going to do things to uh, reduce the issue of, of mental health and isolation. Thanks again, Dave. Yes, we always have to come up with creative ways as social beings to interact. So check out the links below to get access to some of our resources that might be useful for you. We have social stories to explain COVID-19 in plain language, social isolation, and ideas for keeping busy with activities to engage in from home. Also, if you have any resources to share, we'd be really happy to see them in our comments below. Um, so if you could share them there, that would be very, that'd be great. But thank you everyone. Thank you for listening, for taking this time to hear this vlog today. If you're interested in clicking the bell icon below, it will give you notifications anytime a new video pops up. Thank you. So thank you for joining us. And I just want to uh, draw your attention to uh, something. And you probably have noticed, but you may not have noticed. Um, this video was done very differently than our last video. Our last video that we did, Chanel and I sat together and uh, Fessel did the um, recording of, of the video. Um, for this one, unfortunately, um, Chanel had a very, very um, sore throat and didn't want to come into the office, obviously, uh, until her health is fully checked out. And we wanted to do this anyway. So she did it uh, at home, I did it here, and Fessel used magic to put it all together. So it may have seemed that uh, we were in the same room, but we, we weren't. Well, you probably noticed that we weren't in the same room if you looked behind us. But nonetheless, it's just an example of how people can uh, come together to do what they need to do, but in new and different and creative ways. So that's what we encourage people to be thinking about. Thank you. Thank you.